بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the fiqh class Today inshallah we will continue discussing, discussing the issue of wudu in the book of purification and we've reached we're halfway through the wudu we've reached washing off the hands and the arms We started with the hands to the wrists. Then we went to rinsing the mouth and flushing the nose. Then we continued with the face. And now we have reached the hands with the arms to the elbows. And we start with the agreements. Ibn Rushd says, the jurists agreed that washing of the hands and forearms are from among the obligations of wudu. So they agreed on that. Washing of the hands and the arms are of the obligatories of wudu. Why he mentions this? Because in some cases, they differed of the obligation. Why they did not disagree here? Because it is mentioned in the Quran. Since it is mentioned in the Quran, all of them agreed on the obligation of it. However, they agreed, they disagreed about the inclusion of the elbows. That's what they disagreed about. So when we say you have to wash your hand with your forearm to the elbow, is the elbow included or not? That's the issue here. And you may say it is less than half inch maybe, but again, that's the accuracy of fuqaha. They wanted to make sure that everything is cleared. The majority of scholars, the majority of scholars considered their inclusion as obligation. It is obligatory. Which means, if you wash your hand with your forearm, but you don't reach the elbow, your wudu is incomplete. And accordingly, your prayer also is not accepted. Because you have to do the wudu properly. So you have to wash the elbow. Some scholars did not mandate washing the elbows. Why differed? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Qur'an? What did Allah say in the Qur'an? When you stand up for prayer, wash your faces and your hands to the elbows. So, does it include the elbow or not? Does it or doesn't? How? If I tell you how many numbers between 1 to 10, is 1 or 10 included? Yes or no? No. From 1 to 10, how many numbers are there? 8. Did you count 1 or 10? No. If I tell you count from 1 to 10, is the 10 included? Yes. If I tell you the distance between Houston to, or from Houston to San Antonio, how many miles between Houston to San Antonio? No, approximately 160 miles. Are we counting Houston and San Antonio or the distance between them? So are they included or not? No, no, they are not. Between this area and that area. The area itself is not included. While when you say, I traveled from to. So you went from here to there. The same thing in Arabic. The same thing in Arabic. To means with or until. So it could include and it may not. It depends on the usage. How did you use it? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, to the elbows, it could mean with the elbows, 
or it could mean up to that limit and the elbows are not included and linguistically many times it is used it is used without the inclusion of the thing that is mentioned after to yet the majority of scholars mention that the elbows are part of it why because of other evidences like the prophet ﷺ never left washing the hands to the elbows like the hadith of abu huraira radiallahu he washed and he reached there and he and he said that's how the prophet ﷺ performed wudu and that's actually the strongest opinion so what's the reason of disagreement in this matter what's the reason of disagreement this is the main reason the word to ila ila does it mean inclusion or limit so does it mean with or up to that's the reason of disagreement and that's the main reason there is another reason also the definition of the hand what's the definition of the hand we know that the hand sometimes up to the wrist but sometimes also with the arm sometimes it includes also the shoulder that's all hand yes in english maybe we say arm shoulder but in arabic we can say yad so that's another reason for difference if you say the hand is only up to here or up to there that means it doesn't include it but in arabic it's used for all so which should include the elbow but mainly the first issue was the reason of disagreement what allah says in the quran ila does it mean with or up to next wiping of the head because what comes after you wash your hands with the arms wiping the head again they agreed that wiping of the head is mandatory why it is mentioned in the quran anything was mentioned in the quran all scholars agreed on it they all agreed that wiping is mandatory now the previous rukun was what washing or wiping washing what's the difference between washing and wiping yes that's the difference washing when the water flows but wiping there is no flowing of water yes you may it may be wet but not flowing that's the difference in arabic it's very accurate very deep ghusl and masah so they agreed that masah wiping over the head is mandatory but they differed about the extent how much you wipe over your head do you have to wipe the entire head or you can just wipe part of it they differed why they differed again because of the letter or the word the letter ba what did allah say in the quran wamsahu bi ru'usikum and wipe with b the letter ba comes in a meaning with like when you we say in arabic am saktu bihi i got hold of him what did you hold did you hold the entire thing or you hold you're holding part of him like i held him am saktu biyadihi i held with his hand i took hold i grabbed hold of his hand that's an expression am saktu biyadihi did i hold his entire hand and arm or part of it part and that's why the majority of scholars say what the amount that is required is what the whole or part part they say the amount which is required is part but they differed if you say part how 
how, how much required of that part? Is it one third? Two third? Any amount as long as there is part? Scholars differ. The second opinion says no. Ba means that you wipe with the head. Means the wipe should be over the head, the head itself. Which we call in Arabic il saq. This is a little bit difficult if you don't know the meanings of the letters in Arabic, prepositions. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> if you don't know the propositions, it's a little, a little bit better. But it's just enough for you to know that there are two meanings for the ba. And based on, on that, they differed. The first opinion, they say no. Ba does not mean fully. Because if it means fully, it was easier to say, Wipe your head. That's it, why the ba is mentioned. The other opinion says, no, there is a reason why the ba is there. It gives more emphasis that you wipe over your head. So each opinion has their own interpretation. But the second opinion, they say, we have another evidence. Not only the ba, but the traditions from the Messenger wasallam. He always wiped over his entire head. Which means it is a must. But the first opinion, they argue. The majority of scholars, the Jumhur. So, it is a controversial issue. You need to know what's the reason for this, their disagreement. Once you see this, you learn how to extract the rulings. And you know why they differed. When someone comes and says, look, they cannot even agree on a simple issue that we do every day five times. Well, there is a reason. There is a reason for that. So this is the other issue. Next issue, determination of the number. Determination of the number. Jurists agreed that the obligation in wudu to wash each washable part how many times? Three. Do you agree with this falsehood? They agreed that each washable part to be washed how many times? Once. They all agreed. Which means no one came and said you have to do it twice or three times. And I guarantee you if you go now and you perform wudu in front of lay people, a group of people, 20 or 30, and you do each part once, most of them won't keep quiet. And they will tell you, do your wudu properly. They think that you made a mistake. While all scholars, jurists, agreed that it's mandatory only once. Why? Because the hadith is clear, authentic. In Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ performed wudu one time, one time, one time for each part. And twice, twice, twice for each part. And three times. And sometimes he mixed for one part, one time. For another part, twice. For another part, three. So all scholars agreed what? That mandatory once. The second and the third is what? Recommended. Now that does not mean you don't do it. Of course you do it. But if sometimes there is not enough water, sometimes you are running late, sometimes for some excuses, you do it once. Or you wanted to teach people the sunnah. Or you wanted to apply the sunnah. You have been doing this all your life, three, three, three. So one time you wanted to do it, you can do it. That's why they say it is sunnah. Not to tell you, oh, it is sunnah, so don't do it. They differed about the merit in repeating the wiping of the head. That's the issue where they differed. Now, we said each washable part, how many times do you do it? Three recommended. Recommended. It is three. What about wiping over the head? Is it recommended also to do three or once? Why? In the Shafi'i school of thought, they say it is recommended to repeat three. Why? Because of the hadith, the Messenger وسلم, performed wudu three times. There is no exclusion. It did not come that except the uh, wiping. While other scholars said no, it is not recommended. It is not recommended. So according to them, if you add, it is what? Disliked. Just like someone washed four times. 
Someone said, let's do it four times. I want to wash my face four times. It is good. The more you wash, the better you are. Is that true? No? Why not? Exactly. Are you saying that you're doing something better than the Messenger Wasallam? He himself mentioned the Prophet Wasallam. He said, whoever increased, then he has violated and transgressed. That's transgression. Don't say it is good. So making more no, does not mean always a good thing. Just like the prayer. Someone said four raka is not enough for me. I'll do five. His prayer is invalid. So the scholars differed. The Shafi school of thought, they say all parts three, regardless whether it is washed or wiped. Three. The other schools of thought, they said no. For the wiping, it is one. Because the same narrations mentioned three, they themselves mentioned wiping once. And that's stronger opinion, actually. You wipe one time only. Then they differed about the objects of wiping. What do you mean by that? The turban. They disagreed about the sufficiency of wiping over the turban alone. Is it permissible to wipe over your turban? At their time, they used to wrap turban. And it takes time to untie it. It used to be wrapped around the head and around the uh, chin also. Around the face. And then it is left from the back between the two shoulders. The disagreement is in what? If you are wearing a turban, can you wipe over it or you have to take it and wipe over your head? What do you think? Scholars differed. The majority said you cannot. You have to take it off. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah said, no, you can. Abu Thawr also agreed on that. Why? Because of the disagreement about the authenticity of Hadith al-Mughira radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wiped over his forehead, masaha ala nasiyati wal amama, and al amama, turban. And actually the Hadith is authentic in Sahih Muslim. The hadith is authentic, so the matter should be resolved. He said, no, even if it's in Sahih Muslim. Now, of course, many of them, they did not know that it is in Sahih Muslim, but to those even who said that the narrators are trustworthy, still there is a problem with the hadith, because it came with different wordings. Sometimes he wiped over the turban, sometimes he wiped over his head and the turban, sometimes he wiped over his head and he took it. So there are different wordings for the hadith. So what do we do in this case? They said we dis disregard this hadith and we say we wipe over the head. According to Imam Ahmad, the hadith is valid, nothing wrong with it. So you, you, are, you are allowed to wipe over the turban. If a lady wearing hijab, can she wipe over it? Or she has to take it off? She can wipe? What's the evidence? Hmm? What do you say, Khalil? You make qiyas? Is there qiyas in permissions, in matters of exceptions? Do you make qiyas? There is a qaida, there is a maxim that no analogy in matters of exceptions. Like what? The Prophet ﷺ combined the two prayers in reasons. What are these reasons? Fear and rain. Traveling. Okay. Someone came and said the reason for those Three things is what? The difficulty. So if I'm having difficulty, I will combine the prayers. Why not? It is the same reason. What do you think? 
Actually, this is an accurate issue. It will come in Usul al-Fiqh. Some scholars made the analogy. About what? They said, as long as it is valid to wipe over the feet, the foot cover, it should be valid to wipe over the head for the similarity. But that's not the basis. They made the analogy on the action based on the hadith. That's what they said. Based on the hadith. But the khimar, yes. The khimar, the correct opinion is yes, actually, she can. Because it's more difficult than the turban. It's more difficult to take it off than the turban. Wiping off the ears. Wiping over the ears. Scholars disagreed whether wiping over the ears is recommended or obligated. Now again, notice the difference. Anything came in the Quran, it is what? Mandatory. Were the ears mentioned in the Quran or not? No. That's why they differed. However, some scholars said even if they were not mentioned, you have to wipe over them. This is one issue. The other issue, if we say either recommended or mandatory, now you wiped over what? Your head. Do you do this and this? Or you do this, you take water, and then you wipe. Do you have to take new water for the ears or not? That's what they differed also about. So there are two issues in, the, in regards to the ears. Is it obligatory or mandatory? The second issue, do you take new water or not? What's the reason of the disagreement? First, are the ears from the head or not? If you say they are from the head, then you have to wipe over them. Because it is mandatory in the Quran that you have to wipe over the head. And you say the ears are from the head, so you have to wipe over them. So that's one reason of the disagreement. The second reason is the hadith of the Messenger where the Prophet ﷺ, he himself wiped over the ears. So is this addition or it is just only recommendation? So what Allah mentioned is mandatory and what the Prophet ﷺ added is mandatory also. So these are the reasons of disagreement. Later. Once we say they are from the ears, uh, from the head, then we imply what? That they are one part or two parts? If it's one part, do you take new water? No. But if you say it is a new part, then what? You take new water. So that's again the reason why they differed. Do you renew or with the same water that is left? The next issue, washing of the feet. Scholars agreed that washing of the feet is mandatory. Now they did not differ, unlike the ears. Why? Because the feet are explicitly mentioned in the Quran. So they did not differ. You have to wash them. Or actually, to be more accurate, they are part of the wudu. But they differed on whether you wash or you wipe over them. How do you clean your feet in wudu? 
Do you flow? Do you let the water flow or you wipe? So is it washing or wiping? Washing. Some scholars said wiping. Very few. The vast majority, the four imams and others. Why? Because of the recitation. And this is one place where the recitation is the reason for this agreement. Why? Again, it needs focusing. You need to focus with me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَاغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ وَامْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ Allah is telling you, wash your hands, uh, you wash your faces, your hands with your arms to the elbows. Wipe over your, your heads and your feet. And your feet refers to what? And wipe your feet or and wash your feet. According to the known qira'a, the qira'a, the recitation, and wash. If it's wash, then why it is mentioned later after wipe? Why didn't Allah say, wash your faces, your hands, your feet, and wipe your head? It's easier, but scholars said there is a reason for an issue that's coming soon now, after this. The other recitation, it says clearly, وَامْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلِكُمْ Wipe over your heads and wipe your feet. And this qira is mutawatir. But still, the vast majority of scholars said wiping is not sufficient. Your wudu is incorrect. You have to wash it. Why? Because of the other ahadith of the Messenger وسلم. Even this recitation, it doesn't mean wiping the feet. But it is an indication of the permissibility of wiping over the foot cover. So this part, it has wiping and washing, unlike other parts. Plus the narrations of the Messenger وسلم, that he never wiped over his feet. He wiped over the foot cover, not the feet. So, again, the vast majority, they said, even with the other qira'a, it does not indicate that you wipe. You have to wash. So, we have two opinions. This is one issue about the feet. Do you wash it or you wipe it? The other issue in regards to the feet, the place where you wash, are the ankles included or not? Just like the elbows. Just like the elbows. The same argument. Ila, does it mean up to or with? Again, the same scholar said it means with. It means with. Logically, it has to be included, whether the elbow or the ankle. Why? Because there is no exact place where you say that's the end, before the elbow. And even if you say it's not mandatory, you have to include the elbow, because once you reach the elbow, you know where you are now. So there is a limit. But when you say before the elbow, there is no exact limit. You don't know where to stop. So... This is the same issue with the hands and with the feet. The elbows are included, the ankles are included, the answer is yes. The next issue, the sequence of the acts of wudu. Is it mandatory or not? What do we mean by that? Yes, can someone start by washing his feet and then his face? Why not? It's not the way what? Exactly, it's not the way that Allah stated in the Quran. 
But Allah stated the way. Did He state that this is the mandatory way or He stated the way only? It's not necessarily mandatory that this is how exactly you have to perform it. Allah said, wash your faces and your hands with your arms to the elbows. Wipe over your head and your feet. Wash your feet. I did that. Allah did not say, do this and this and this and this in sequence. Other scholars said, no, Allah stated the sequence. Why? Because of the mentioning of the feet. If it's washable, in general, it should be mentioned after the washable things. You put things similar together. You don't flip them and mix them. That's not arranging the things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not mention even one letter without reason. So that's an indication that this is the way it has to be. Not recommended. And that's the opinion of majority of scholars. Some scholars said no. It is only recommended. So we will, we will stop with those issues. We mentioned the hands with the arms, the head, the ears, the uh, objects, the number, and the sequence. Six issues. I believe they, this is enough for today. And now, inshallah, we will read. Open page seven of the book. Page 7, the fourth line. Go ahead, read, Rimza. Okay, we want to make sure that everyone can hear online. Yes, go ahead. Now we're talking about which part? The hands with the elbows. Okay. Yet hand. So there are two reasons of disagreement. Okay, that's the reason for disagreement. Let's move to the second issue. Wi wiping of the head. Read it from the beginning. The jurists agreed. The jurists agreed that wiping mash of the head. Masah. Oh, jurists agreed that wiping mash of the head is one of the obligations of salvation. They agreed about the extent of wiping. They differed about the extent. So whoever said you wipe only part of it, some of them said the part is one-fourth, some of them said one-third, some of them said two-thirds. And he also defined the part of the hand with which it is to be wiped as a third. He said it's wiping with less than two fingers is insufficient. So even with you, now you, you wiped over one-fourth. That's the limit with Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah. But it has to be with three 
fingers at least. So if it's with two fingers, what? It is not sufficient. Did not fix a limit for either. So if you wipe any part, as long as it's part, that's it. The basis of this disagreement is due to the equilibrality ischilos that is in the particles but in the usage of the air. It is sometimes used as a mere addition for emphasis, as in the words of the exalted Tanbut bit. Tanbutu bit duhn. Yeah. According to one who read Tumbitu with Adamma, yeah. Tumbitu, it produces. When we say it produces, it doesn't make sense to say it produces with duhn, oil. It produces oil. So why the ba is mentioned? Emphasis, extra. أخذت بثوبه عضده what's the عضد this is the عضد I held him or wrapped him be by the garments and his forearms there is no purpose in denying this that is the fact that ba may convey the idea of a portion of this is the opinion of the Sufi so basically their 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 disagreement stemmed from the difference between schools of Nahu. In Arabic we have two famous schools, the school of Kufiyun in Kufa and the school of Basriyun in Basra. These were the two cities of Arabic. They prospered in the language and based on that many issues, fiqhi issues, linguistically issues uh, generated because of the difference between two schools. Usually the school of Basra is very restricted and the school of Kufa is flexible. This is, I mean, this is something very advanced. I mean, even many people who studied Arabic for five, six years, they know how to speak. They don't even know that there are two famous schools of thought in Arabic in the grammar. Performed ablution, wiping his forehead and turban. It is recorded by Muslims. If we accept this, if we accept that ba is superfluous, then there still remains another probability. Whether the obligation relates to the front part of the name, like the head, or the back part. Okay. Uh, leave the next issue, determination of the number. It's clear. And the next one, determination of the objects of wiping. I wanted to move to page 10. Wiping masah of the ears. Let's read this one. The jurists uh, disagreed about the wiping of the ears, whether it is recommended, sunnah, or an obligation, farida. Farida. What's the hukum of madmada? 
What's the ruling on non mother? How many opinions do we have? Yeah. Go back and find out. It's only one one session ago, so Whether it is an addition over what exists in the Quran about the wiping of the head. The problem then is that it is a recommendation due to a conflict between it and the word if it is interpreted as an obligation. If, however, it is considered an explanation of an unelaborated word in the Quran, its hukum becomes the hukum already existing to the head. That is obligatory. Okay, go to the next paragraph with respect to the disagreement about the renewal. With respect to the disagreement about the renewal of water for the ears, the cause is the vacillation of the term ears, whether they are considered independent limbs for purposes of evolution or whether they are whether they form part of the head. One group gave a distinct opinion that they are to be washed with the face while another concluded that inside of the ears is to be wiped with the head and the outer parts to be washed with the skin. The reason is their being equipoised between being equipoised. part of the face or head. All this has no real significance in view of the common tradition about their must and it is considered a and it's widespread practice. Okay, so who of the scholars recommended wiping of the ears three times? Only Shafi. Okay, so that's give you an idea about the issues that we discussed today. With this, we conclude our session. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.